Hi, this is again Volleyball Explained Podcast. It's autumn again and with Ronnie we are going to make a preview of the Italian Super Lega for a very fifth time. I was I was uh, I checked uh, we started uh, doing that in t- uh, 2020 uh, in the COVID pandemic uh, season and now we are going to have the pleasure to do it for really fifth time. Ronnie, how are you firstly? Hello Boda, uh, I feel um, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, it's been crazy how how fast time goes. Uh, I remember uh, well uh, the first time you you invite me to be one of the guests in your podcast uh, alongside Nicola and yeah uh, since that we have been like you know not closely friends but I can call you a colleague in this uh, good uh, uh, hobby that we 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 care and love uh, uh, call it volleyball so yeah after year after year uh, it's been uh, a pleasure to to make this uh, first 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 podcast to, uh, with you uh i'm sorry that nicola couldn't, couldn't do it this time but you know he at least is, he said that he will come back <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah um speaking of this year uh well you know uh, I think uh, we probably will talk about it uh, later, but uh, the this season will be uh, a little bit like weaker than before due to the exodus of many players, you know, to other leagues seeking money, especially seeking a better financial situation. Uh, many of them, you, as you know, uh, went to the new brand Japanese league. Um, but nevertheless, uh, Italy always uh, um, find a way to to be one of the best league uh, in the world. And we will discuss what uh, we're going to see this season or what we can expect at least. Because <laughs> as you probably know, we are really bad making uh, <laughs> uh, um, assumptions. Uh, what is the word? What, what is the correct prediction? Word? Yeah, predictions, predictions probably. Yeah. Uh, well, be my guest. When yeah. Um, firstly, uh, the 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 Super Cup uh, has been played uh, during the last weekend in the semifinals. Perugia won against Piacenza and Trentino, uh, without any any doubts. Um, won against uh, <clears throat> and the team of Monza uh, and in the final it was a very big clash uh, traditionally between uh, Trentino and Perugia but at the end uh, Perugia prevailed uh, 3-2 okay Trentino had all the chances to win however Perugia looks um, more organized more aggressive team and uh, in terms of individuals, the best team so far. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But what do you think about the performance of Perugia in the in the Super Cup uh, weekend? Let's go it this way. Uh, well, this is a Perugia team that has been building something step by step after the end of the Olympics. The beginning the preseason by having to work with a few players as you know Semenu uh, Ishikawa which is the new brand uh, signing of this club and the Italians could, couldn't be there uh, but yeah uh, they play a lot of friendlies this preseason in part because of that because they knew that the Super Cup will be a uh, at the at the very at the very end of September, and they will need to be prepared in order to have a chance to win. In I mean that the teams is the same. They only change Ishikawa uh, for Le- Leon. Uh, in terms of offensive, uh, they they might suffer a little bit. Of course, Leon in the last two seasons wasn't the 
the Saint Leon that we knew, uh, in part because of the all the injuries he sustained over over the over the years. Um, but I think Ishikawa can bring that balance, especially in, in reception. Uh, and, you know, serve, serve, receive. He he's a well all around player. Uh, my my question with this Perugia team will be how Lorenzetti will uh, manage uh, again the 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 all the all the bench that he have because he he have uh, to deal with Oleg again and uh, Ishikawa now and Semenuk and the the last oxide hitter I, I think is Kanshota. Maybe I I don't remember who is the last uh, uh, oxide hitter of Perugia, but in any case, he will not see court very yeah, much for season. sure. Yeah, uh, like always. Uh, also, they have a good pair of opposite. They repeat with uh, Wasim Bentara and Herrera, of course, and uh, the setter, the only setter that they have and that that will play. In this case, will be Janelli with the regular proper uh, exit to Resovia. Uh, yeah, very much is the same team, more experienced, more older. That for sure will not be contained with only a Super Cup. They will aim for sure to that Champion League uh, title that they don't have. It's the only title that Perugia didn't win yet. So let's see if this year they can broke that course. Uh, but yeah, very, very uh, normal result. I thought it will be more easier, but again, we are in the preseason. I think that this year Super Cup, Super Cup is like a friendly, not an official tournament. Uh, many players take uh, a rest after the international season for obvious reasons uh but yeah i think perugia have all the tools if you ask me to dominate again like they did last year probably just to uh just to add to what you said uh the other uh mm. change in the in the team of perugia is agustin loser instead of uh, Flavio uh, uh, Gualberto, who uh, who went exactly to Trento. Uh, and it could be a little bit erratic. However, I believe that Ishikawa for Leon is not, an, um, it's not a, uh, a step back, a step below the level of last season. Actually, I believe it's, it's, it's an improvement in terms of uh, what you said, balance in the team, balance between offensive and defensive part of the game. Uh, Ishikawa is a really a, a very impressive player. And uh, Loser is one of the best uh, attackers, but also blockers in the, in the game uh, in terms of middle blockers uh, uh, at the moment. And I believe that uh, the biggest... Um, the biggest uh, plus, the biggest positive for Perugia is always they are, uh, in, they are able to keep their team. Other teams are changing two, three, four uh, main players, like for example Piacenza, uh, Lube. Lube also, of course, uh, but not, not Perugia. Perugia, uh, Perugia is either keeping their team or improving. Uh, so I believe this is an improvement for them and uh, my suggestion is to comment on the other three teams uh, when we uh, when we um, when reach them in the in the in alphabetical order my this is my suggestion probably the most unbiased one uh, of course we will we will go back uh, to to Perugia's team but probably very shortly in terms of starting uh, six potential starting six uh, because it's uh, more or less uh, for example, let's just uh, 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 lastly uh, add that uh, the the second uh, the second setter of Perugia is Francesco Zopelari, uh, 1997 born. Uh, I haven't uh, heard uh, about him so far, and the fourth um, 
Атака и с Никола Чанкота. Uh, he was born in, in 2001. So, uh, of course, uh, Perugia has a very good bench, uh, but uh, they, they need to, mm, to, uh, to keep uh, their squad healthy because uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not wishing them that. However, one or two injuries can influence uh, the season a lot, I think. The main players like uh, Gianelli or, <clears throat> or even Ishikawa or uh, probably Ishikawa or Semenuk uh, if, uh, if uh, Potnitsky is healthy and, uh, and ready to go, not that big of a problem, uh, still uh, could be. Okay, uh, let's go then uh, to the, um, uh, to the uh, first team. And uh, traditionally, uh, when it comes to alphabetical order, uh, this is the team of Cisterna. Uh, however, I'm not in Cisterna. This is this is Cisterna. Okay, uh, here we have a team. Uh, you will tell me if you agree with uh, that uh, constellation uh, potential six uh, seven of course with the coach uh, Guillermo Falasca with uh, Michele Baranovic the Spanish outside hitter Ramon Efe Bayram in the uh, other outside hitter position Teo Four uh, actually an <clears throat> Olympic champion Teo Four Daniele Mazzone, a former player of Modena and Trento, Enrico Diamantini coming uh, uh, from uh, Lube, and Domenico Pace, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was playing as a, as a substitute in, um, in Trento. Uh, what do you think about this quote, and uh, uh, do you believe that, that there it's possible for this not to be the the regular starting six uh the well, other players here are just just to mention like uh you know, the 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 the, the uh, japanese guy yuga tarumi and uh um, michael chervinsky uh, austrian that's a little bit strange uh and uh alexander uh nedelkovic well, yeah, this is a team that uh, combines some experienced players like Nedel Kovic, you have Michel Baranovic, a veteran, Daniela Mazzoni, of course, Enrico Diamantini. I mean, they are not contenders to be at the playoff, but like every season, you have that team that you don't bet your money on, but <laughs> uh, can cause some damage. Usually they start to play very good at the beginning of the season. Then after the middle before December or during January or February, they fell apart before the Copa. Uh, I think Cisterna can be one of those teams. I mean, uh, Bayran is the, his third season in Italy. He has a terrible national team season with Turkey. Uh, was the worst in terms of passing uh, among the oxide hitters. Uh, still need to grow in that aspect of his game. But then you have two good uh, and experienced uh, middle blockers, uh, which uh, I think is a plus in this uh, very, very medium team. Like Diamantini and Masoni both uh, when, uh, was both playing previously, sorry, at the Italian national team. Then you have Ramon, maybe the less known player in this uh, in this uh, starting uh, six uh, alongside the the libero Pachi, and of course Teo Faur, which uh, who sorry who last season was one of the best in terms of scoring. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember if he led the league in points, uh, but was one of the best uh, uh, scorers of last season. Uh, and of course, uh, Falasca, 
a Guillermo, who is the brother of uh, the legendary coach uh, Miguel Angel, who passed away many, many years ago. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I I will look on Cisterna results. I've been I haven't looked the preseason friendlies, but maybe ten, nine, even eight if they have lucky. We we know that Cisterna, I think two years ago, um, they had a very good run and, may, and almost did the playoff. They lose in the last two rounds of the regular season the chance to go to the playoff. But yeah, I think this year, with all the talent that they have, you, uh, Yuga Tarumi, I don't know if if this Oxahita will, will play, but uh, every, everything is possible. Yep, I, I was thinking several years ago that uh, one team, I, I, I could say that was Cisterna, they will be, I predicted they will be bottom of the league and they were, uh, as you said, almost in the playoffs. So, uh, if you are um, betting, I I would not uh, um, suggest you uh, pre, um, recommend you to to bet against Cisterna because Cisterna is always uh, able to to do surprises, uh, and I I would not say this team is is bad, not at all. Probably they don't have the the best. Uh, outside hitters probably not the most consistent outside hitters however uh it could be a good team tail four is a is a very good uh opposite and uh i could i i could say that they could be a very compact team uh, and also you put like uh three foreigners here like faul bayran ramon you can also put Nedelkovic uh, yeah. in in every, in any position you like because you have you because you can you know so, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you have Baranovic, Pace, uh, Pace, Diamantini, and Mazzoni. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Nedelkovic could be a starter. This is uh, for sure. And I, but uh, which place he's going to take? This is a. Uh, a difficult difficult one um okay next the, slide let's say to the people that uh will show the the podcast that this lineup are not the final you know this is a prediction yeah 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 yeah, yeah. this is mm -hmm. this is my predictions uh and i uh i will i will go back with that uh just to, just to to explain uh these lineups are uh, totally possible in terms of the in terms of the rules on uh, on Italians on the court. When we go, when we reach uh, Lube, uh, we need to explain very very deeply why you could see six uh, foreigners uh, on the <clears throat> on the court, but it's uh, totally uh, totally eligible to play uh, all, all of them together. I mean. Uh, okay, let's go to the newcomer, the promoted team from last season. This is the team of Grotta Zolina. Uh, and uh, here we can see some veterans, some interesting names, some names I don't know really, and uh, some names that we are very aware of, like Oleg Antonov, former player of Cuneo, Piacenza, Trentino, Dusan Petkovic, really a, a, a name uh, our listeners and viewers are probably well acquainted with. Michele Fedrizzi, he played probably 10, 12 years ago for Trentino. Uh, Demianenko is a Canadian middle blocker. Uh, Timofey Zhukovsky, uh, this name is not the, the most Croatian name you can possibly have he was born in Belarus, I think, but he's playing for uh, he has been playing for some years for Croatia. Uh, and uh, I'm not really that uh, aware of the Libero and the other and the other uh, middle blocker. Uh, however, this team could do some damage. I'm very happy that Georgi Tatarov, a Bulgarian uh, national player, 
uh, 21 years ago is also part of the team. I would not say he will be a starter. However, I've, I'm sure that he will get uh, uh, enough playing time. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he will make 22 when, when he play there. Uh, I mean, that's a really good age to start thinking about being a starter. <laughs> and I think, like you mentioned, uh, this is a thing that you can possibly see him as a starter. Uh, also, I think this is one of those teams that will fight to the last moment for the relegation because of the age of their starters, of the possible starters. And yeah, the age and the moment those starters are. Right now, Antonov is not the prime Antonov anymore. Timofey Zhukovsky, mm, I don't know really well uh, his skill. Federici, Marquisio, I mean Petkovic, and Demi Demianenko uh, is coming from the French League. He plays several seasons at Montpellier. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Grotasolina is one of those teams that will uh, fight for relegation. I will not say more because uh, we have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good ground to your fellow countryman Tartarov to start uh, his yeah. professional uh, career. And will be good for you guys if he ends playing as a starter at the end of the season. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy with his choice, honestly. I, I wrote him, uh, and this is uh, something I've done yesterday or the day before yesterday, I've wrote him uh, with good luck on, on Instagram uh, because, uh, yeah, in, in uh, in, uh, the time of recording is uh, for us is Friday 27th uh, on the 28th uh, Saturday the uh, the the league is starting uh, so uh, I would say he has all the chances to play because I'm uh, I'm sure that uh, that he has the abilities to play in such a team probably if he was a uh, in a um, better uh, tiered team like for example Mozart or a Modena or whatever, he, he, uh, there the, the, the competition is much fiercer and uh, with uh, aging partners like Antonov and uh, Fedrizzi, uh, I'm sure uh, he will have his chances and it's all about him, at, on, on him to, uh, to, to grab these chances and, uh, and um, show what he's capable of. Um, Okay, uh, I, I agree with you totally. Uh, Grota Zolina will fight not to be relegated. Uh, and uh, yeah, with Tatarov in, I hope this is going to happen, but it will be very, very tough task for them. Uh, okay, next one. This is your team. Uh, Was but my without, without, <laughs> without, a, without a Cuban, this one, uh, right? Because... Yes. Uh, no more, no more Simon. Uh, after many years, of course, last year it was the same. But but Yant was there. Uh, Yant is now in Russia. No more, no more Juan uh, Torena. No more Real. I mean, yeah. Lube was at the end of the decade the team with most Cuban that I have seen in my life, and I've been watching Piacenza over the years <laughs> because of the like for the Cubans, but. For the first time in like five years, Lube won't have any Cubans on his uh, on their roster, and this is a very interesting uh, roster. You can take Nikolov of the starting rotation because he is not ready yet. The guy isn't even uh, jumping from his uh, hernia disc uh, surgery which is at his age, very unfortunate, but better remove the pain that living with that uh, at 23, 22, sorry, 22 20, years. He, he's, he's only 20. He will, he will make 21 at the end of the year. 
Okay, so uh, speaking of uh, what have changed for uh, for Lube Civitanova, as you mentioned, Jan is no more there. He went to Senate St. Petersburg. Um, Every Lepke, the Canadian, will take his place in the starting rotation. I don't know if this will be uh, definitive, uh, at least till Nikolov uh, come back. And the second oxide hitter will be, of course, uh, Botolo, Mattia Botolo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they are not the tallest oxide hitter in the market, but maybe can help with the passing problems that Lube Chivitanova have the previous uh, season. Uh, they also bring Podrashkan in because, as you know, Ansani went to Modena. I mean, this is a good trade. Mm, Podrashkan, I believe, half, uh, he still has... Um, one one or two more good years it depends if he doesn't sustain a severe injury and then you have chinenese which is okay two times were gold olympic champion not nice. bad not bad not bad, <laughs> not, not bad for, him, for him but the biggest problem of this team uh my dear friend Bogdan, is the foreigner limit because when nikolov uh Come back, Medei will have to choose who will be his uh, his partner. This is important. Let this hmm. is important. Sorry to interrupt because I was very uh, surprised to um, to establish that both Orduna and Podrashen have an Italian passport. So this team Orduna here, have. Orduna yep. Have. Yep, and Podrashen in two. You can check also in the in the Lega Volis website. I I I I I know I knew about Orduna, but I didn't know about Podrashen. Podrashen, you know, also uh, in his um, uh, let's call it uh, 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 now. I, I I'm going to open it, and here, oh, I guess the name of Marco Podrashen. We have a. Uh, Lugo uh, Nashi, uh, the, born in Serbia, Nazionalità Sportiva, Italian. Italian. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, that was I was I was have that uh, I I had this discussion also with a with a with a forward of the of the volleyball explained uh, uh, web uh, Facebook page, and he he didn't know it either about Podrashchenin. So I was also uh, uh, surprised. So, so this is a totally, a totally possible eligible team to play. Uh, of course, I need to explain. I put there Nikolov because he is for sure the better player. However, we don't know how much time he will need to to be back in the in the in the game after the injury. I hope it will be sooner, but uh, I'm not that big of an optimist. Yeah, they also bring uh, this uh, Iranian uh, young uh, player called uh, uh, Kasande Poriya Hossein or Poriya Kasande Hossein. I don't know the order, but uh, he he was uh, really interesting in the U21 the, uh, World Championship uh, last year. So let's see, this uh, uh, is an experiment. Like also is another experiment bringing Mattia Bonifante, the the son of uh, of Bonifante, uh, ex uh, Italian national team setter, uh, which is only uh, twenty years of age. I believe he will be one of the best setter, uh, best it Italian setters in the future, but for now. He will be the second um, setter behind of Orduna. That at the same time is my biggest concern with this uh, thing. Can Orduna, at his age, with his uh, forty-one, with with his shape, with his uh, physique, can help more than the Checo helped last season this team? That's uh, the bigger question. 
Another big question is how Laguncia will come this season because uh, last season for him wasn't anything special. On top of that, he has a terrible national team season like almost everyone in uh, in Turkey. Uh, at some point, he was replaced by second uh, opposite. Uh, uh, Gurbus, I believe his name is, um, a lefty opposite. So, uh, too many questions. I, I think they still will fight uh, to get one of the five first places, maybe fourth, uh, looking the competition. But, yeah, this is a little bit that will try to fight, but it's a developing team at this point. Okay, uh, next team is Milano. Milano lost two very, very important players. They lost firstly Ishikawa to Perugia and secondly they lost uh, a losser uh, to Perugia too. So two to, to, to players, former players of Milano uh, going to uh, to to Perugia, mm, I I put Regers as a starter. Uh, so my first question is: Do you think that Matei can play uh, in the opposite position this season? Because he, I I I would say that he he doesn't want to play there. This is my perception about him. Mm, I think with. Uh, more clarity in the in the position with Melgarejo out, with Ishikawa out, with uh, of course Loser is not the same position, but he's also out. I think uh, Milano will rely more than ever in what Martin at his 39 40. Um, 40. yesterday, the, uh, no, not, not yesterday, uh, four days ago. At his 40 uh, years of age, can do or will do. Uh, last season, if you watch a little bit games of Milano, he was not that good. Uh, I think age started to kick in, and uh, we can see a, a slower Matej Kaczynski with the with the pass of the time with the pass of the uh, rounds uh, let's see if his body can uh, hang out there the entire season because passing at his age can be a challenge you know and then also spiking you did well putting regers at opposite he he, he deserved thank you to be one of one of the starters in this team then you have Piano and Kaneshi. Well, then they bring Loati, which again is one of the two times gold medals in this in this thing. And you have Porro one more year. Um, well, I think Let, let's explain. This is Paolo Porro because we will see another Porro brother, and they have a third one uh, who is now seventeen, I think. Something, Something like, like that. that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Mil Mil Milano. Uh, just to just to make it make it clear, they uh, they aim for a uh, a place at the playoff, but can be easily get out of of the contention uh, because I don't think this team can hold the entire season. Uh, playing the same way that they did one or two seasons ago when the Ishikawa uh, explosion uh, and loser, of course, uh, helped the, the team achieve the best results in the history of the of the club. So uh, what what we can expect about this uh, Milano, uh, they, they will put a fight, especially in, in home at home, sorry, but having team, having teams like uh, Piacenza that we will we'll see later, like 
Perugia, lá em Trentino, uh, lá em Lube, lá em the, the Neighbor, Monza, and Modena, of course, which is another thing that we will discuss later. It's very hard for them to, to, to think in the top five right now. Yeah, uh, just just to add at the end about uh, Milano, that uh, uh, in terms of outside hitters, they have also Davide Gardini and uh, Tatsunori Otsuka. Otsuka was one of the new uh, kids on the block uh, when it comes to the to the Japanese national team. Uh, he's the uh, let's say uh, a backup of uh, Ishikawa and uh, Takahashi in the. Uh, in the yeah, Japanese season. team, yeah, yeah, and Takahashi is not playing in in, in Italy this uh, this season. Okay, uh, uh, let's go to the next team, and this is the team of Modena. Modena partially uh, has a new team, partially has uh, kept their old team with uh, Diceco coming from uh, Lube. Uh, another player that is not in his greatest shape both volleyball-esque and physically i i would say uh, probably not not going that well from my mouth but uh, i i said it already uh the opposite um, the opposite position is interesting with paul buhayer um Rinaldi and Davis Kiba uh, kept their outside hitter positions. Sanguinetti and Zani coming also uh, this season. And so the Liberals are the same. But I would like to ask you about the opposite position. Uh, do you believe that a team like Modena, with the image of Modena, uh, the, champions, um, the champion titles uh, during the years, and does need to... Uh, better name uh, uh, than uh, Buhayer? I mean, uh, let's start by saying that Modena financially is not the same yeah. thing that we used to see when we started to watch volleyball. Many things have passed and even when they still considered one of the place to go when you are in Italy and watch to and want to watch a good volleyball game at the Pala Panini. Uh, financially, they are not there to to compete with the with the best teams anymore. But this season, they uh, find a way to get get back Alberto Giuliani again. He was coaching in Turkey. He ended that contract for no reasons uh, and went back to Italy after several seasons, uh, of course, coaching Slovenia and also Olympiacos at the Greek League. Uh, this is the first key in this uh, machinery that Modena has created this, this season. Then you have Bukeger. Bukeger, we have to remember that was a beach volleyball player. He transitioned to uh, indoor and was part of that, uh, uh, was part of the Ravenna team, the last Ravenna team that was something uh, like seven, seven years ago. They won the yeah. Challenge Cup, uh, but then have the bad luck to injury both knees one year, then he Injury the the other one playing for the national team. He could he could be he could have been one of the best. He will have been one of the best. I believe so. But unfortunately, life is hard and shit happens. Like like you know, which in, which is interesting. This modern team is that the backup opposite Amek Akbari from Libya. <laughs> Many people yeah. don't know or might know don't know who this guy is. He has spent his last two three seasons in South Korea, playing for several teams, and he has decent numbers. He also demonstrated this preseason 
what he can do. So at some point, I think if uh, Giuliani give him the chance, he can end with the starting position. He also, will be the mm. he will be the most uh, the most famous Libyan uh, in Italy after the the son of Muammar Gaddafi. Probably he was <laughs> playing or in in the Italian football league or not playing but owning. I can't remember. Uh, I will I will check because it's interesting. Uh, Gaddafi project. Then of course, like you pointed out, the Checo is not the same anymore. Uh, he he will. You know, play, I believe, two more seasons and then quit, retire for good. Uh, and one interesting thing, you put here Davish Kiva. Right now, Davish Kiva is injured. He hasn't played any preseason friendly. And this is when I want to see this because, oh, because of I want to see this team. Because they are a Cuban. Which name is uh, Gutierrez, Jose Miguel Gutierrez. He is only 23 years old. Uh, but last season, he saved uh, Prisma Taranto team for relegation and ended statistically, which means numbers, as the second outside hitter in the league, only behind of Micheletto. Of course, people uh, in my close circle say, Oh, man, you know, it's a team that you don't have pressure to do things. You only play and uh, things can be good or things can be bad. But uh, he he performed, no pressure. And here in Modena, he will have the pressure not to win maybe, but to qualify for playoffs, which I think is the main goal of this team of Modena. I believe Modena will fight to be in the top five position, maybe five, maybe six, seven. Uh, but it's a team that for sure I see in the playoff. Not because I have one countryman in that team, but the way uh, they have been playing the preseason, uh, the way Giuliani has have rotated the thing, as you can see, they don't have any... Um, Italian problem right now. Uh, who knows when David Skiba comes, what can happen. But uh, yeah, for me, uh, it's a must watch uh, this thing of Modena. Yeah, let's finish with Modena with uh, my memory is still okay because Al Sadi Mohamed Al Qaddafi is a retired professional football player with one appearance for Perugia and one appearance for Udinese. His career was widely, widely attributed to the influence of his father, Muammar Qaddafi, the country's leader at the time. So I, mm. I would, um, I would wish uh, Ahmed Iqbari to to become for sure the most famous Libyan in uh, a positive way uh, in Italy, or at least in volleyball. Okay, let's go to Monza. Monza uh, played in the in the Super Cup, um, <clears throat> a Super Cup semi-final. However, Monza was uh, without uh, uh, mm, the two veterans, without Usmani Juan Torrena, uh, you tell more about him, his shape, uh, how he's going to influence the, the, the process uh, in, in Monza and Zaitsev, who is a newcomer in this team. Uh, and I was very, that's my question. I was Me very, too. Too. Uh, first, uh, <laughs> I was not sure how to construct the starting six, the starting seven. Massimo Ekeli is like forever a coach of uh, 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 for that many many years a coach of this team okay uh, fernando kreling i would say the best uh, brazilian setter uh, uh, i will probably go on a fight with somebody about that uh, the best brazilian setter uh, at the moment uh, gagini will be the libero uh, okay however tero avario 
uh, good American, for sure, good American uh, middle blocker. But we have Schwartz, the Canadian. Is he going to play as an opposite? Is he going to play as a middle blocker? Uh, is, will, will Juan Torreira be able to, to be in that good of a shape to, to influence uh, widely and uh, seriously uh, the performance of the team? Uh, Luca Martira is a young uh, Finnish outside hitter. What do you think about all this, uh, the, the whole situation? Well, for sure they are uh, weaker than previous year with the exit of... Uh, Aran Takahashi to the Japanese uh, volleyball. I don't know who, who is the other guy that uh, went off, uh, but uh, uh, Steven Mar to, yeah. to Piacenza. Let's, let's start by saying that I'm very concerned about the signing choices of this uh, team because on one, hand, on one hand, they have Maybe two of the best players that Italy got in his national team, but their best year is is uh, already done, which are Saisef and Osmani Juan Torena, of course. And then on the other half, they have maybe three of the best young prospects of young athletes in Europe. And this is, uh, uh, this is funny because if uh, after many, many years, they become uh, big, big names in volleyball, uh, you can say that you see them playing in the same team, which are Matila from Finland, Ibrahim Lawani from France, and of course, Eric Rors from Germany. All those three players uh, are like uh, very important in their respective countries uh, to develop, you know, their, their, their volleyball in the years to come. So, I don't know, I think uh, seeing the roster and seeing what they what they did at the pre-season, they, they, they also went to Korea to play some friendlies. Uh, I think that uh, maybe behind of Modena, Probably, because you see, there is many new names, and lead, you you cannot adjust during the the regular season. You you don't have many time to 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 see who what what is your perfect uh, lineup and and stuff. So it's like I I I saw in the in the preseason. This is a thing that will want some. And we lose a good amount of, of game too, uh, especially against those above them. So you can say Trentino, Perugia. They 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 might surprise one or two teams. I I will not uh, deny that. But overall, too many new faces. And when you have too many new faces, you can expect everything. Positive things, yeah. negative things. Yeah. The positive is they have uh, a lot of talent on the bench. Uh, the the negative thing is that this talent with uh, with Lavani and Torres uh, is to not. We have to grow fast. We have to grow fast. Yeah, <laughs> and not and they they don't have the experience needed, so uh, it could be a negative uh, negative factor. Okay, let's let's go to Padova. Um, Padova is a very Cisterna-esque team. They are not impressive. However, they will make one or two decent surprises during a season. They have also Jakub, Jakub Cutini on the bench as a head coach. Uh, and uh, they have the other Poro, the second Poro, the outside hitter Luca Poro, 2004 born. Uh, Tommaso Stefani, this is from the generation of, uh, of Alessandro Micheletto, 2001, I think, uh, uh, as an opposite. Uh, Fabian Pluck, uh, out, uh, middle blocker uh, with uh, Falaschi, a veteran um, in, the, in the 
setter position. Diaz, the Libero is interesting one because he is the backup of uh, the backup of Gubernikov in the French national team. Uh, and uh, Marco Sedlacek, Croatian. Not that impressive. I would say something like uh, like um, or Cisterna, probably one level uh, better than Gorta Zulina. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. Uh, a little better than Grota Solina. A little better for me than Cisterna. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe equally than Cisterna. Of course, a little bit better than Prisma Taranto, which we didn't, we didn't have seen yet. But, uh, I mean, Sedlacek after a, a, a reality season in Wiggle, when he didn't meet the expectations, uh, have uh, have to have to make a step back in his career, and you see Cisterna, Jabrieski, and then Padova, and this must be hard for him. But uh, it is what it is. You have Marco Falacci, um, experienced setter, Fabian Plack, which I think. He reached his peak in in terms of uh, club in in Italy. Um, three, this is the third season for Plak in in Padova, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But uh, oh no, second second season, second season. But uh, yeah, um, then you have Stefani Porro, which is the promise. Let's say the the, the 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 young prospect of Italy, but then you have uh, Mas, uh, Masulovic. No, uh, yeah, yes, Masulovic. yeah. Velko Masulovic, uh, outside hitter, another two thousand two, which is uh, yeah. a, a prospect of Serbia, which by the way doesn't give many prospects in this in this uh, <laughs> in the recent years, but there you have it, Masulovic. Uh, like you mentioned. Benjamin Diaz, which is the backup of Yenia Grebenikov. Overall, a team that is in that uh, in that last four places, maybe seven place, eight place. It depends on how how things at home goes. They mm. they play really really well at home, not so much abroad, but. Uh, we have seen Padova in the recent years taking biggest steps at when they play at home. So uh, they they can do some damage, even push bigger teams to tie break when when they play at home. And this is a team that, of course, has been focused uh, the recent the the late the, the recent years, sorry, in developing their young. Uh, their young uh, ranks and and of course it's a thing that sports to many talent to the biggest names of course you, we saw already Botolo uh, three two Gardini seasons also. Gardi uh, of course Gardini of course uh, and many others among others you know mm, yeah for me eight place seven place something like that they will fight at home, maybe win one or two games abroad. But uh, we did with that uh, squad. Uh, I don't ask too much. Uh, according to Volleybox, sorry, they they only have listed uh, one uh, opposite. I don't know if any of those oxide heater would uh, be uh, will will be opposite too. Yeah, probably. Uh, I'm not sure which one because they are not that. I'm not um, well aware of them. For sure, not Matteo Orioli. I watched Matteo Orioli in the in the Italian uh, U21 team in uh, not U21 U19 in um, in 2021. So I don't think it will be uh, it will be uh, Matteo Orioli for sure. Uh, okay, 
Let's go to the next team. This is the team of Perugia. We are not going to uh, to spend that much time here because we talked about this team. But my only question is, uh, do you think that in this potential static 6-7, uh, uh, any changes are possible in terms of the regular starting? For example, Russo instead of Sole? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think Sole have an elbow surgery mm -hmm. uh, recently, so I think Russo will be an starter. I don't know if if he uh, uh, sorry if he started at the at the Supercopa. Uh, maybe I I I I missed that completely. Uh, was Agustin Loser, of course, and Russo? Yes. Uh, Sole is not. It it wasn't even at the game, so yeah, he he yeah. had that surgery. So at the beginning of the season, Loser and Russo will be the the two um, middle blockers, and then well, Samenu Ishikawa. Let's not forget that they have Ole Plotinski in the bench. Which also can be a starter. Wasim Bentara is the man in the diagonal with Gianelli and Colacci. I don't know when Colacci will retire. Well, it's another season <laughs> playing as Libero. Uh, yeah. And this is a thing that make, for example, Italian fans angry with Perugia. The lack of empathy and to give opportunity to young Italian prospects. The only care is win, and they don't care about developing young talent, even in the liberal position. So uh, I remember when Nicola made those uh, statements, saying why or explaining why Perugia is one of the most hated teams in the <laughs> in the in the Superliga, but. You know choices and this is a business and this is the way that uh gino chelsea want to have his club uh overall you know this is a team that can conquer not only italy but europe they already say that they will not participate at the world club championship this year so they will not win the three pit not that they care and uh yeah that's 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 all okay yeah. okay piacenza very interesting one why um they were left by uh, lucarelli ricardo lucarelli and leao instead of them came steven marr and urosh kovacevic uh as individuals this uh, this uh, doesn't look well. Okay, I'm not, I'm not under um, uh, underestimate uh, underestimating um, Kovacevic and Mar, especially Mar. But when you have Leao and uh, Lucarelli, and now you have Kovacevic and Mar, it doesn't look really well. Uh, I would say that uh, they will have a mm, uh, a case with uh, Romano being consistent. Uh, his uh, backup will be uh, mm, the the Bovolenta, Alessandro Bovolenta. Uh, they need Brizard to play as he's playing in the uh, in in the French national team. Another, like you says, uh, two times Olympic champion. And of course, uh, your guy Roberlandi Simon with Gianluca Galassi and Scanferla, great liberal. However, the consistency uh, will be the the question here. And if, if if they were able to form a team, because they were not able to do that in the last years. Well, of course, under the guidance of one of the most controversial coaches uh, in the recent years. Andrea Anastasi. Um, what can I say about this Piacenza? Of course, uh, you maybe had Leal 
in this team, but they all barely played because he was yeah. always un injured and have physical problems of that. Mar in the recent year has proven that he can be uh, a starter almost in any team. He is the leader of the Canadian male national team. He is not a big star, but he managed to get things done, you know, and uh, at his near 30 years of age, uh, he will have the hard task to replicate what he did in Monza last year with this uh, Piacenza team. Uros Kovacevic, that was a controversial sign because in the recent year, Kovacevic has proved that he is not the same player that we saw years ago in Trentino anymore. He has been dealing with too many injuries. I remember well that in the two uh, games that we have uh, played against Serbia, uh, Cuba against Serbia, we lost the two games by in five sets, but we managed to uh, control Kovacevic very, very easy. I don't know it's because he lost his ability to jump. He wasn't a great jumper uh, either when he was playing Trentino, but he uh, tends to be a little bit slower than, than before. And let's say he's passing because with several injuries, uh, you have to see how, how good this uh, player can be. In the last moment, Piacenza pulled an interesting sign, bringing the Turkey sensation FM Andirachi, which is the future of this country. Uh, he is uh, two meters and four tall. And I believe he can be something uh, special in this league if they give the, if they give him the chance, of course, to play. Watching Kovacevic recent uh, performance, I believe that is very, very, very possible. And then you have Romano, the same Romano that uh, previous season. He have proven that most part of the games he cannot perform well, and this year he will have the the chance. To compete for the position with uh, with a uh, John Promise, the son of uh, Bobolenta, Alessandro Bobolenta, and I mean Bobolenta has proven that he can he can hit hard when when it's needed. He just need the the time in court, the good guidance. I don't know if he can achieve that with Anastasi. But, uh, yeah, it uh, will be very interesting to see. They lost 3-1 uh, to one at the semifinal of the Super Cup with, uh, with Perugia. Not, not bad, considering Perugia is like 10, 10 steps above of, of this team. Of course, Simon, uh, what can I say about Simon? Uh, for me the best of all time in that position, but he is not that dominant anymore. So he is 37 years of age. Uh, he deals with a hernia in his, in his spine that comes and goes. Uh, and because of that, they hired Musegue Gay, the French, to that position. So uh, yeah, for me, four feet, Sixth place, maybe. Uh, I will. I will ask you at the end about predictions. Probably about top three, top four. I don't know. Uh, let's say top four because top four means the the, the teams uh, that will play in the in the semifinals. Next team. Next team is Taranto. Taranto is uh, of the tier uh, and. Together with uh, Cisterna, with Padova, with Grota Zulina, Jan Zimmermann, the German <coughs> setter, 
Uh, Wood there coming from Trent to the, the middle blocker. Romy Alonso, another Cuban uh, guy. Uh, he played in Piacenza, yes, or in Piacenza. Mm. Lanza El Gironi Rizzo. Uh, compared in terms of individuals, players, where do you put them? Not as a place in the final ranking of the of the league, but more of a class, individual class to 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 uh, Padova and uh, uh, and Cisterna. Yeah, for me, I I won't I won't I won't say much about this team. I mean, I think uh, they are the main, the biggest contender with Grota Salina to be relegated. Uh, too many, too many if players, too many, uh, let's see players also. Uh, team held, of course, Lanza way past of his prime uh the air of course but too young gironi also zimmerman alonso has been dealing with injuries back and forth he didn't play too much last two seasons in piacenza i mean uh the results at the preseason friendlies also didn't uh, throw anything spectacular so uh i I don't know. I think it will be again very, very a surprise if this team can survive uh, the entire the entire twenty two games of the season. So uh, yeah, I I will not add many many things more because as you know, we are like one hour and something. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you want to say something. Mm, I don't. I don't think so. I will be interested in how they will uh, make a team of those very different players. Also, in terms of uh, nationality, I think. Of course, okay. They have the. They have actually four Italians because I was surprised to see that Elt uh, is. Uh, is an Italian citizen too. Uh, actually, he was born in Italy, I think. Uh, yeah, yes. he's he's Team born in Italy. Team Helt, uh, which is a little bit surprising uh, uh, in terms of the name, but uh, this is normal. You have you have Zaitsev, Travica, uh, yeah, uh, that that many players. Um, uh, uh, not not only being Italians by naturalization, uh, but actually being born uh, in, uh, in in Italy. Uh, okay, uh, next one is Trento. This is an interesting one because uh, Trento doesn't have that much uh, changes from last season. Uh, we mentioned already Flavio uh, coming um, in. Uh, in the team uh, for Podrashenin. Uh, Rychlicki is injured, so Gabi uh, was injured. So Gabi um, ended the match against uh, Perugia. Uh, and the other players are not uh, were, were there. Uh, the, the head coach Fabio Soli too. So uh, <laughs> I would say that Trento is the biggest favorite for the second place. What do you think? Yeah, of course. I think, uh, well, you know that regular season is about uh, consistency. One of one thing can mess it up in the dual meet games between them, and that's it. You know, because the difference between the other teams is too big. Even when people say no, but this league, everything can happen. No, is really impossible to think that Trentino can lose against Padova at this point, can lose against uh, maybe Milano. Can happen, but it's very rare. So speaking about this team, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, Srilicki, I didn't know he was injured, but Gabi Garcia, which 
at the last moment of the market, he switched uh, his uh, his option. He was intended to go to uh, Greek League to a team that is not really good, but uh, him he and his agent managed to change that, and he went to Trentino. Uh, Kyle Russell, a former uh, uh, player of Taranto, an American, went to went to the team that Gabby was intended to to go. Uh, yes, uh, Gabby. Well, I think he started really good after college, but then after many players after uh, that went through college system in United States they tend to decline because I don't know if they have the mentality or the approach to be relevant in the European uh, pro volleyball scene, which is very different than NCCA. Very, very different. And we have seen this uh, with your guy, uh, Rado Parapunov, he was excellent in NCCA. He was yeah. champion with Hawaii. And what happened after that? Nothing relevant. Uh, I think because of that, uh, Vladimir Nikolov take out uh, Alexander before he he um, he was like more relevant and stay with that with that level of play. He say no. If you have the 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 chance to be a pro player, take it. Don't stay here, because it's not good in some aspect. It's good because you can study. If your goal is is uh, being like professional player, like ten years and then work in a regular job, but if not good, if you intend to be one of the best players in the world, and that's what happened with players like Gabi Garcia. Let's see if uh, now that he realized that after the after Paris Olympic, uh, the program of US volleyball will rely on him to be maybe the first or the second uh, opposite in these uh, new uh, four years till LA. And he changed his mentality to to something better, you know. Uh, Flavio, well, this is a well uh, well around uh, middle blocker. He have experience. I think that's the main reason why Soli made the move and hired him. And then Kosamernik, I think they can be the best duo in the league this season. In the in the in the middle blocker the department, you know. Then you have La Via, Micheletto, nothing to add there, and Espertoli, and Laurenzano. Uh, I mean, this is a powerful six uh, that you have here. I would say six started, but they don't have any bench. They will have to manage how Micheletto and La Via play because the season is very long. Maybe uh, maybe against Grotasolina, they can rotate something. Mm, uh, what what are the, the other guys that they have there? Sorry if, if you have the information. They have Alessandro Bristot, a 2005 Italian. And they have uh, Giulio Magalini. Well, as you can see, they didn't hire any backup to La Via and Micheletto. So, yeah, uh, let's pray that those two have healthy, uh, are healthy enough to go through this long season. That's my only concern with, uh, with uh, Trentino Bolli. Yeah, and uh, let's, let's finish about Trentino in, the, in this way. They are the only possible contender for the champions uh, title, at least uh, as, uh, as it seems uh, for now. 
but the bench is a problem on or the lack of bench okay last team verona i love talking about verona you know <laughs> with uh with rado um starting as a head coach of the team for a sixth season that's a lot the, he uh, he became a, a head coach of verona in 2019 he he's there more than we do podcasts about the italian league that's that's pretty impressive um they have a new uh setter and i would say he will be a starter uh, instead of spirito this is constantino baev uh, interesting fact he played in the bulgarian league uh, several years ago 2020 to 21 not sure uh, probably even 19 uh really really not that sure in montana uh, I would say he will be a starter. Uh, Mozic, Keita, Javornok, Cortesia, Damico uh, are um, kept from the last season. And the, the another new name is uh, is Marco Vitelli, uh, the middle blocker coming from uh, Milano. Um, do you believe? Let's let's call it this way. Do you believe Verona can perform better than the last two seasons because? as long as i remember they were out in the first uh, round of the playoffs in the quarterfinals both uh, both times well uh if you suggest that they have what it takes to be a semi-final team my answer is still being no no yeah. for for sure <clears throat> now they of course have the team to make into the qual to the playoff but I don't know how Mosic will come back because we barely ha have seen anything of him after the surgery. This is important. Zabornok also, uh, he's, he has been like on and off in his career. Um, but the most interesting thing is the setter position. If you ask any Russian uh fan of volleyball right now who can be the starter setter of russia if they could play most people will say konstantin Abayev. he uh, he was very decided in russia for uh, for all the clubs but instead he decided to uh play abroad in a more let's say uh friendly environment you know how things are in russia they tied you to a club that formed you for many many years and you cannot change uh, clubs till you are like 28 or something and i think abayev is from dynamo moscow if i i i don't know he belongs to Sibirsk. okay to novosibirsk and um, yeah that's from one uh, one Bulgarian coach to another to another one from Plamen Konstantinov to Radostin Stoic. So he he was given the option: Do you want to go abroad because you know you cannot play in any Russian club? That his name is not Novosibirsk, and he chose to play abroad and gain more experience. He's a player that has been playing also in the in the French league. He played also in the French league. He he had he has uh, been doing things, you know, interesting things. I remember him because at the 121 World Championship in 2017, we beat his team uh, at the semifinal, and Cuba uh, go through the final, you know. But Abai one was one of those. Uh, was them the start and setter, of course, among other uh, Russian players. But yes, uh, for sure. Let's see how Mossy come back. Uh, the middle blocker are okay. Keita, of course, good opposite, good jumper, and especially in his position, that he cannot, he won't, res he won't pass anymore. We know that that's his uh, Achilles uh, tandem passing. Um, what else? I think the Amico can perform well. Of course, you don't have bench. You never had bench with this team. 
But it's Sunny, a Sunny is okay. The 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 outside hitter. Well, uh, like like Espirito, sometimes can be good, sometimes can be. Yeah, uh, um, Zingio, Zingio is uh, also okay. Of course, uh, he's not that big of a class. However, I think he, he could be a good backup uh, in terms of just changing style uh, when it comes to uh, to attack, uh, to first tempo attack. Uh, okay, Jensen. I don't think he is. Yes, yes and I don't think he's that big of a class for... Okay, he was he was a he was a guest in the podcast a long time ago uh, already, but yeah, I but, don't think you know, he's that he, big of a class. He he can perform if if needed, and that's what Stoichev wanted to have, like a team that maybe he doesn't have the best players around him, but he can rely on this for certain games and that for certain situations. Like and Jensen is one of those players. In the past, I see Jensen like easily score like more than twenty points when he had a good day. Of course, let's 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 think positive here. You know, no, 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 not bring every shade to to the players before the season start. I think uh, they are young, still young, but with the years they have improved. Let's see how Abaev contributes to their offensive. Okay, Ronnie, let's go to the last part of the podcast. It is long enough, one hour and uh, 21, mm. 22 minutes so far. Um, but we need to make this one. Okay. Uh, so it's this. So, okay. <clears throat> Predictions. I'm my request for prediction. My requests for predictions are just two top four and a champion. Okay, three the champion, top four, and the team that will be relegated in the end of the season. Champion Perugia, top four, Perugia, of course, Trentino. Uh, Piacenza, and I will say, I will say, I will say one of those two, or, or Lube or uh, Monza. Monza, hmm. okay. Um, I will, I will make a bold prediction changing Monza with, with Verona. I, I probably it's more of a uh, let's hope it's going to happen uh, but I think it's it's time for uh, for this team to to make the best season they are they are capable of okay and uh, and uh, of course I'm I, I agree with the prediction about uh, about Perugia being the champions um, and the, the the relegated team prima talent. Taranto. Okay, I will say go to Zulina, uh, hoping that it's not going to happen because of, of, of Georgi. Um, okay, and uh, in order to finish the podcast, uh, the uh, the schedule for the for the very first round, uh, starting on 28th of September, Saturday, uh, Civita Nova Lube will, will play with Padova in the first day. And on Sunday, Piacenza, Modena, um, Taranto, Milano, Perugia, Verona, uh, Cisterna, Trento, and Gotta, Zulina, Monza. And I hope that the next time uh, Nicola will be back for the podcast. Let's say that we can make the next podcast in around a month. As of now, that means that three, four rounds will be played and we will have probably not enough um, material to to analyze but still a decent one uh, you're, you're unmuted sorry 
uh, as always, it's always a pleasure to practice our English, which uh, we don't uh, uh, do too often. Yeah. Uh, and of course, on top of that, discussing this beautiful sport that yeah. we love and care, Kelly Volleyball. Um, good luck to every team. Uh, the arguments that we say here are not personal, are only based on numbers, perform previous performance. Uh, we know we don't intend to offend anyone in any in any way. Uh, it's only opinions from fans. Maybe Bordan is a little more expert than me. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but we we only look to discuss uh, what what can happen from a more uh, a more uh, simple perspective without numbers without analyzing deep in players uh, that kind of stuff that sometimes uh, other fans don't understand and yeah that's the meaning of and the purpose of volleyball explain to explain you the easiest way what can happen in the in every podcast you do uh both time. thank you very much for inviting thank you me very much thank we, you very much we hope the next uh podcast we can come with our friend nicola yeah and uh if if possible we are going to include also victor because uh we know people like his uh, analysis uh, uh not like us he's a professional uh, coach so he has more uh, for sure more expertise expertise than uh, than us this is uh, totally certain so we will try to to include him uh if by the way if not if not uh, in terms of uh, in uh, as a part of the um uh, of the of the show of the podcast on the merit probably i can ask him to just to to record a short video um of his opinion for the next time but this is this is a topic that we can uh we can discuss uh, uh later with him okay guys uh thank you again for watching us uh, or listening to us um whatever whatever way you found uh, in order to to follow volleyball explained and cuban spike and uh see you the next time bye bye see you bye bye